Welcome to Brunel University Dota 2. This is the first episode of what could potentially be a new series where I show highlights of our games for the benefit of our uni society and anyone else who cares. Our match this week is an Arrow Dota 2 League quarter final against Surrey. We would probably have been meeting Cambridge in the semi since they smashed Group A, but they got a DQ for fielding an ineligible player in all their games and not marking him as a stand in. Kind of sad, but it means that getting through this one rewards us with a best of three semi final against Queen Mary's, a game where we have a really good chance to get into the finals in our first year, no less, so this is probably the biggest game we've played all year. No pressure, lads. Lining up for us today were Daniel Ellis, aka Baprist, Darren Ong as himself, Daniel Sinclair, frequently seen on Reddit and playing as Dancat Pro, me, JK, and Stanley Peddle, also known as No Title. So, into the first game draft. The draft went as follows They banned out World of Arrow, we banned Invoker. They banned Death Prophet, we ban Zeus. They picked Undying. We pick Ventral Spirit and Enchantress. They pick Crystal Maiden and ban Spectre. We ban Ember Spirit. They ban Phantom Lancer. We ban Templar Assassin and pick Jakiro. They pick Juggernaut. We picked Windrunner. Screw you, Valve. Windrunner for life. They pick Bounty Hunter. We ban Queen of Pain. They ban Slark. We pick Meepo. They pick Dragon Knight. And that's the draft. If our bands looked a bit dodgy, then there's a good reason. Surrey are playing with a stand-in who's quite good. He's 5.7k, actually, and plays mostly mid lane. Shout out to Ava for standing in for his buddies when they needed him, and for getting all those matchmaking points. Impressive stuff. Anyway, we weren't too keen on giving him a mid he could actually carry on, hence the skewed band list. As for who's playing who, Daniel was on the offlane edge, Darren playing the Windrunner, I can't play Meepo for love nor money, so Daniel handled that, and I took Jakiro. And Stanley playing that holding role, the five position ventral spirit. The guy might not be miracle yet, but he can buy wards with the best of them. The game began with a long pause, as almost everyone on both sides was disconnected automatically. Thanks Valve. Despite the mass DC, there weren't any real problems with the lobby, and pretty soon everyone was reconnected and ready to go. With the addition of the bounty runes spawning at minute zero, you can occasionally see big fights spring up around these rune spots very early on. This time, however, both we and Surrey were content to give the bounty runes away. They gave theirs to the Juggernaut, and Darren's Windrunner took ours. The first action of the game was when Daniel engaged 1 vs 3 in the bottom lane and came away with the first blood onto their Crystal Maiden. I'm sure it was very impressive, but unfortunately we don't get to see it because I had shit to do when I was recording this and so used the directed camera. Thanks Valve, and sorry Daniel. As far as I can tell, what happened was that Crystal Maiden tried to frostbite one of Daniel's creeps, but he locked her down with net, got the Hellbear's clap off, and then chased her down. A couple of minutes later though, Surrey had their kill onto the Enchantress, prepping her with a Janada strike from the Bounty Hunter before locking her down with Crystal Maiden disables and using the Juggernaut spin to apply the finishing touch. That Juggernaut CM combo is no joke, and adding a Bounty Hunter into the mix makes that early game super hard for Daniel. Meanwhile, Meepo is farming. Shout out to Stanley for that nice stacking. I was too busy being a bad support player. Surrey then picked up their second kill of the game, the Bounty Hunter rotating to mid lane and combining with the Dragonite's ultimate to pick off the Windrunner. Tough luck to Darren, who had been holding his own against the 5.7k player up until that point. Juggernaut then committed his Omni Slash and Spin on bot lane to get a second kill on Daniel, but the push strat that Surrey were threatening hadn't quite materialised yet, and with Meepo farming and Surrey's ults down, we were still okay. The scores were levelled up after Surrey tried to dive Daniel under his tower at bot lane. They were reaching for the kill and couldn't find him, and afterwards he easily turned around and got a double kill with some precision impetus volleys. With that momentum and rotations from the Meepo and Ventral Spirit, we pushed bot tier 1 and secured the first tower of the game. So far, so good. I wasn't there though. I was taking advantage of Dan leaving top to get some far for myself. Position 4 supports, remember, it isn't greed if you're buying a mechanism. This time, it was my turn to die. Bounty Hunter and Juggernaut combining to spin me down under our tier 1 tower. I used the magic wand to give myself a couple of extra seconds, but unfortunately wasn't able to get to safety. I was avenged soon after though, with Darren and Dan both teleporting to top lane and finding a pick off onto the XP and farm starved undying with a nice shackle shot. Daniel was also pushing bot tier 2 in the meantime, so hard in fact that he forced double rotation from Surrey, leaving their tier 1 top undefended and an easy clean up for our second tower kill of the game. Not only that, he even baited out the Omni Slash and got away cleanly as he did it. Well played, that man. Our Meepo also continues to farm. It's difficult to make highlights of someone farming, but I wanted this in because otherwise it looks like the Meepo just got his farm out of nowhere in the late game. And that's not true. Stanley and I stacked for him. Well, Stanley did anyway. The first big fight breaks out just as we're pushing mid lane. I get caught by a Crystal Maiden hiding in the trees, Darren's return shackle shot just misses, Bounty Hunter tags me and the Undying Tombstone gets laid down. I miss all my skills as Daniel dives their tower and gets stunned just as their team teleports in, but manages to survive long enough for Juggernaut to chase her away from their team and up onto our high ground. Stanley hits a good quick stun and from then on Juggernaut is in trouble. 
He drops his healing ward, but gets caught with a net after a timely rotation from Dan's Meepo, escaping on just a tiny fraction of HP. Remember to kill that healing ward, guys. Dan then goes absolutely insane, scoring nets onto the Dragon Knight and the Undying that have moved in to try and support their Juggernaut. I catch Dragon Knight with an Ice Path and then a dual breath before Darren makes that kill secure with a Shackle Shot, and then it's Darren again to finish off the fight with a lovely Power Shot Snipe. Dan then gets a little bit greedy in diving the Tier 1 tower to try and catch the Juggernaut, but manages to get out unscathed. After that dive, we were unable to effectively push mid, and so back off. Victor's in the team fight by two kills to one, but sands a tower. What happens next is a bit clowny. Juggernaut and Enchantress exchange pleasantries in the mid lane before Juggernaut realises that Enchantress is one of the heroes he's trying to kill, and runs back in with the spin to try and make amends. Daniel simply walks up onto the high ground and plugs away with impetus shots until the Surrey Captain and carry player is dead. Not particularly great Dota, but we'll take whatever we can get. We then use the momentum of that kill to take their tier 1 mid tower, making it a hat trick of towers without reply, giving us a big gold advantage going into the mid game. Look at that net worth chart as well. Has Meepa been farming? I think he has. This next part is not our finest hour. We have a huge standoff in the Radiant Jungle because we want to kill Roshan, but sorry, won't let us. I place a sentry ward down near the Radiant Easy Camp in order to scout out the Bounty Hunter who's been laying down tracks from that position. I then catch him with a dual breath and an ice path but he manages to run back to his team for cover and the safety of Juggernaut's healing ward. Daniel then gets over-aggressive and is blown up by an Omni Slash and Dragon Knight's Breathe Fire, before Surrey use their Drum of Endurance and go chasing for more. I throw out an Ice Path that catches two, but unfortunately Dragon Knight just managed to stun me before he was disabled and I'm easy pickings for the Juggernaut. They then nearly find Dan's Meepo before he gets away, but Stanley isn't quite so lucky. He's unable to get the undying zombies off of himself, and he ends up as food for the Juggernaut. Double kill for him. Sorry, might have taken Roshan for themselves at this point, but decided to let it go. Hey, I'm not complaining. We then manage to deny our tier 1 mid, and then smoke up in order to take Roshan in safety this time. With 5 Meepos and the Medallion of Courage on Ventral Spirit, we were able to kill it very quickly. I'm going to shut up for a second so you can watch it. We kill Roche so quickly, in fact, that we catch Juggernaut by surprise as he comes in to check the Roche pit. He panics and uses his Omni Slash to no effect, and then we easily kill him afterwards. Undying then lays down his tombstone to try and cover the Surrey escape, but is caught by a shackle from Darren and a swap from Stanley. Stanley then manages to escape on almost zero HP as we swarm up the high ground and find a kill on the Crystal Maiden as well. Perhaps the biggest kill of the game comes barely 30 seconds later. Dan teleports to top lane in order to push down and farm, and runs into Dragon Knight on his way to the hard camp. With five Meepos, he easily finds the kill. Meanwhile, I've just finished my mechanism, so with Aegis, Mech, and Surrey's mid lane player down, we take the tier 2 tower and make a push for high ground. Darren then finds Bounty Hunter with a great shackle shot, and secures the kill with ease, finishing him off with a big power shot and Meepos poof. Dan then lands a great two-man net to secure the kill onto the Undying. Crystal Maiden then decides to stand in my Macropire to use her ultimate, and burns to death as well. Daniel then makes a pretty crazy dive for Dragonaut and needs my mech to keep him alive. We really should start keeping a counter of every time he dives, he's done it three times already this game. Despite that, we take the mid lane tower and the racks with ease. We then decide to make a push on their top barracks as well. Between my Macro Pyre, Windrunner's Focus Fire, 5 Meepos and the Ventral Spirit Aura onto everyone, our lineup destroys buildings pretty darn fast. Sorry, attempt to take down Dan's Meepo with the Omni Slash, Breathe Fire and Juggernaut Spin combined, but a fresh Guardian Greaves keeps the Meepo alive long enough to get off some last ditch nets and damage, causing Dragon Knight to burn inside my Macro Pyre whilst Meepo respawns with his Aegis. With all of Surrey's key ultimates down, and their Dragon Knight dead, they are unable to stop us taking a second lane of barracks. Bounty Hunter buys back, but we're already out. With both top and mid barracks down, we decide to go for the killing blow straight away while they're still missing Dragon Knight and Omni Slash. We take down their tier 2 before Dan tries to make a cute play with his freshly purchased Manta style, walking the illusions up onto their high ground before poofing onto them. It doesn't quite work perfectly, but it's still more than enough to establish a presence for us onto their high ground, and at this point Surrey simply can't match us, losing multiple heroes before calling good game. All in all, a good win for us, and now a single win will put us into the semi-finals.
And that's the game. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like or subscribe to the official Brunel University Dota 2 channel. If enough people want to see more, I'll put up the second game and make this into a series. These videos are actually quite a lot of work for me, taking about 7 hours to record the footage, edit and script and record the voiceover, so it'd be really great if you could leave whatever feedback you can. It'll really help me out and make me feel like I'm not wasting my time. Many thanks, see you all soon. Hashtag bleed brew.